Hi there, you are really welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this But First Pray post. But First Pray is all about gathering together people who are passionate about young people and children in prayer to lift those emerging generations up to God. Throughout history, Moves of God have followed faithful Christians committing to prayer. And we would love to see a move of God among Gen Alpha and Gen Z. So as we join together in this time, let us kick off this um, slot with some prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we get to come together and um, lift up the young people of this diocese um, in your name, Lord Jesus. God, we pray. We pray for each area, for each school, for each town, for each village, Lord Jesus. God, where young people dwell, let it not just be a dwelling of physical nest, Lord God, but God, let it be a dwelling where you also are. God, we pray for teachers, we pray for youth workers, we pray for um, church leaders, for um, community leaders, Lord God, that are um, impacting the lives of young people right across this diocese, Lord God. God, we pray that there's a freshness in this time, Lord Jesus, and God, that our hearts would be open to be challenged, um, ready for what you have in this next season for the young people of Blackburn Diocese. We hand this time over to you and we say, have your way in all things. In your mighty name, Amen. Hello, welcome to But First Pray. Let's reflect for a moment on uh, the things that are going on around us just right now. Um, our government has just put back the unlocking of our country for another four weeks. That pretty much pushes it right to the beginning of the summer holidays. Um, there's lots of uncertainty about holidays, about things people have booked, things people have hoped for. And all of that obviously puts a lot of pressure and a lot of um, uncertainty on our young people as well. So we want to come together. We want to pray for them and all those connected. Let's think about the the pressures that the young people have had to deal with these last nearly two years. Um, the uncertainty it has brought in lights of exams, in lights of um, can I see my friends? Uh, can I see family further away? Can I visit my grandparents? Um, there have been deaths around. There have been uh, a lot of disruptions to plans. People have been looking for a year forward to a summer holiday. They were told just a few months ago that is likely to happen. And now that is being put under pressure again. So young people are really struggling with this. Young people are also um, dealing with the, the consequences of having a, a good chunk of their life. If we're thinking of a 10 year old, this is nearly a fifth of their life soon that has been in this coronavirus infected um, thinking and just adjustment. So please pray for these young people and please pray for all those people around them that are trying to support them, that are trying to help them to adjust to this new normal, help them to um, prepare for whenever it is when, when things open up again, when they're suddenly sitting next to people right close without a mask, when they're suddenly being able to go out and mingle with huge groups, when they're suddenly being able and maybe even forced to go on school trips, to go into um, swimming pools full of people, into all these environments that they're not used to. And please pray for yeah, all the teachers, all the youth leaders, all the church leaders, all those people that want to look after them and especially their parents as well. Let's do this together now and commit it all to God because he's in control no matter what else is going on. God bless you. Thank you so much to Oprah for that thought to help focus and encourage us today. Sarah and I recently got to sit down with some folk from across the diocese 
who minister with children and young people about their experiences over the last 16 months. That's the things to celebrate, that's the challenges they faced and what they're praying for for our children and young people at this time. I'm Mina and I do the Sunday School at St Peter's Church in Burnley. I am Lucy um, and I work um, at St James's Church in Cliverow as their youth minister. I've been in post since February 2020. Jo Taylor, based in Scotland. I'm currently church warden, which I've been for the last four years of St Peter's Church. One of the amazing things that happened was our youth band um, really developed their ability to lead and to take more responsibility for that. And they've really grown and developed. We've also, since coming out of lockdown in September, had new young people start because we've been able to start some new activities here at the church. It's really given me an opportunity to have a blank slate and to kind of really work things with, with where God wants to take the stuff now, um, which, is, which has been really positive. We've had a Sunday school Zoom, which um, we've run every week, sometimes occasionally more than a week, if it depends on the, the church year. That has been very, very popular uh, and has meant we've all kept together when we've returned to church, um, in particular because some of the children have asked for extra Zooms, for prayers, um, to hear extra Bible stories and the quizzes have been really popular. And I think, the, and because mums can sit and listen as well, they've joined in and we've all come back. Every one of the Sunday School families has come back happy and eager to be joining in again. The children, to be honest with you, have just grown immensely spiritually and involvement within the services. So even though they were very much involved there, they completely run it, except for the sacramental side of things. But also connection with the other children in the other, other parts of the United Parish where they wouldn't normally get to see them. And just their comfort in terms of being open with their questions and the theological understanding. It's been really encouraging to see how they've grown. And so it's been growing from all sorts of languages. not to lose that momentum when we got it on screen because it's grown, the congregation has grown by about 12 uh, since lockdown. So again, how you move from this online to that hybrid church, and so it all continues to grow, it doesn't split up again because together, united, we're stronger, obviously, we're meant to be one. Because the youth didn't even know me, they had no relationship with me. So then having to do stuff online, but then of course things unlocked, we started doing some face-to-face -face stuff, we met them, and then it all, all came crashing down again. And so the challenges have been getting it going, actually building up the youth and then somehow by only by the grace of god i'm sure keeping it going when we had to keep coming up with new plans to become a more blended and unified church so that we are one family working together without having sort of separate parts a children's part an older part a middle age that we are one help them spiritually further as they go along in their lives. You know, they don't lose their relationship with Jesus as they go on. That their faith is a living faith. It's with them every day and it's real. To reach out to a much wider area so we don't lose them at year seven. For those that are moving on to their next step. My prayer would be for those young people that they would trust God with their future. That as our church community, we can support them in whatever way uh, they will need in the future. For young people, you know, with all this, we've got to isolate because you're near that person and things, um, that they wouldn't develop um, this fear of being with other people. Could you really just keep them to exploring and us helping them walking in faith to, to achieve the plan that God's got for them? And my third one would be for mental health, for young people that need that support, that need help, that they would get the support they need and that we would become more aware particularly young people and their mental health and the things that cause it, so we can help them. And finally, that they, they themselves will grow to be able to give this message of God's love out to everybody else. Maybe what has been shared by Mina, Lucy or Joe has resonated with your experience. Maybe it hasn't. But as we set our eyes on God and lift these emerging generations up to him, take a moment to thank him for the wins you've seen this year. Ask him to be in the challenges with you that you face and that through what you do to share his love with children and young people, that they would come to know him for themselves. Thank you so much for watching this. God bless. Goodbye.